Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. So for this one we are going to go to Belgium and we're going to do, this is my first Belgian beer review for you in quite some time, it must be a year or something like that, but we're going to go to a little town called Ursel and visit a brewery called Brouwerij des Musketeers and their beers are all called Troubadour and we're going to have a taste of the blonde beer today. This is one I picked up in 6 degrees north in Aberdeen and uh, they sell a whole host of different Belgian beers so you've got a very good range that you can choose from there. So as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very kind of short history of the brewery It will only be a minute or two long and this is a very new company so it will be short If you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward The brewery website's in the description for you below along with a link to my other reviews That I'll hopefully do from these guys in the fairly near future So anyway as I mentioned to you, this brewery are based in Ursel in Belgium. I believe this is in the sort of Dutch-speaking region in the northern part of Belgium. But most of their beer is brewed at the Proof Brewery, who also, and this is Locris de Hefte, this is where Toil and uh, McKellar brew a lot of their beers, actually. But the brewery was founded in 2000 by four brew engineers who had graduated from the famous Flanders Brew School at Caho St. Leven in Ghent. Now, the four friends, Christophe de Roo, Rickert Mertens, uh, Stefan Sudermans, and Sven Soys, they had just graduated university but they actually found it very difficult to find jobs as brewmasters and this is particularly difficult in Belgium because of the sort of family nature or monastic nature of many of the breweries. The sort of brew recipes and things are regarded as very kind of close kept secrets. But the four friends decided to put their efforts together and founded the Brouwerij des Musketeers. They said it was the idea for the name came from the sort of, uh, you obviously know the Three Musketeers story where friends kind of, they were enthusiastic and just went together and everything. So this was where they got the idea for the name from. But they actually conducted several trial and error brews in the early days before they finally produced a blonde beer that they all loved and this was this guy here so they named their beer Troubadour and the Troubadours were actually young men from medieval times who wandered from village to village sharing music traditions and stories and things like that but they felt this was fitting because they say that they really wanted to share the traditions of Belgian brewing with the rest of the world and that was kind of against the grain if you like with uh, with Belgian brewing as I said a lot of the beers are kind of uh, the recipes and stuff are very very secret because of the family companies or the monastic companies and things like that so very cool that these guys actually want to share the kind of uh, method and stuff like that for brewing their beer so very very cool brewery in that regard since they started in 2000 though they've got quite a few beers now to list the range for you you've got the blonde obscure magma uh, the special uh, imperial stout and also the west coast as well as I say check out the brewery website below and you will be able to have a little look at the different beers that these guys have on offer so anyway to tell you about this beer itself this guy is a 6.5 percent blonde Belgian ale I'll just bring up the camera let you have a little look at the artwork on this one it's quite nicely done actually for being quite a new brewery it does have a kind of nice sort of old style artwork on it just see if you can see it a bit better with the light up just a little bit more maybe it's just reflecting a little bit too much I can see that seems to be the sort of perfect level of light there but as you can see very nicely presented it tells you a little bit about on the back it has both uh, Dutch and French on it I'm assuming that this this beer is from the uh, from the, the Dutch part of Belgium if you like in the north but I might be wrong about that so apologies if I'm offending any Belgian viewers or that it's just a plain bottle cap on this guy but um, yeah I guess without further ado we can get on and try this guy so a 6.5% Belgian blonde beer from Ursel in Belgium a oh, little bit of stuff coming off there so I'll need to do that sometimes that that's actually something that happens kind of commonly with Belgian beers I've found you can get quite a lot of carbonation in them and it just builds up if you open them suddenly. I should have thought of that before I actually poured it. Sugar up the last little bit and get the sediment into the the bottle. But there you are. As you can see it's poured like a typical kind of uh, blonde Belgian ale. You've got that really nice sort of straw colour. I'll need to dry that up later but we'll get on with the beer tasting just now. Let's bring up the light and let you see the colour of this guy a bit better. As you can see it's a really nice kind of hazy bright orangey amber colour. There's a lot of sediment in this guy actually. That must that, There wasn't that in the bottle so that must have just been when I put it in the fridge overnight. But as you can see there's a massive kind of three finger frothy white head on this guy. It is very very white, not even creamy. Definite white. There's a good bit of, uh, of carbonation just going up towards the bottom of the head here but there's a hell of a lot of sediment floating around in this bottle so it must have just been overnight that that's kind of agglomerated or there might have been a little bit of the bottle that I didn't notice but it looks very nice so in terms of the aroma with this guy you're getting the very kind of typical Belgian bready yeasts on this one which is always what you expect particularly from the brawn beers. 
So there's a little bit, there's a big bready yeasty um, aroma. It's kind of, it's the sort of typical sweet Belgian yeast as you would expect. There's a little bit of spicy note in there too, maybe a sort of wheat spice, but it's not a wit beer, so maybe I'm getting that wrong. Smell it, it could be a little bit of the sort of clove spice as well. But you can pick up if you're struggling up a little bit, I'm struggling with this because of the head, but you can get a good bit of caramel malt in there. And there is a bit of grassiness to it as well. Maybe just a wee kind of light bit of uh, sort of lemony citrus from the hops too. But yeah, it smells like a really nice beer actually. As I say, typical kind of belgian aroma. So without further ado, let's have a go of the Troubadour Blonde from Browery de Musketeers. Cheers. Now that is really nice. Very, very smooth beer. I haven't actually drunk that many blonde Belgian Belgian blonde beers. It's mainly been triples and quadruples that I've reviewed on this channel so far. I think this might be one of the first blonde beers. But I, I should say, the Belgian blonde is a style that I really like. I like nice big bready beers. And the Belgian one is a very good variant of that for my kind of palate. But with this guy, you're getting a huge, um, you're getting a really nice Belgian yeast uh, blanket just over the tongue there, that kind of nice typical um, Belgian yeast. There's no kind of hint of, um, there's, there's a little bit of spice in it, but it's not like I was saying maybe the sort of um, clove spice that you'd expect in a wit beer. It's not really like that at all. Yeah, there's a kind of just a slightly peppery spice to it, but it's very mild. It just mixes very well with that big white bready and sweet yeasty malt base on this. It's really, really nice, actually. You're getting an oil, a nice oily feel at the front of the tongue as well, and that's where the sort of caramel malt flavours are coming out. It's definitely caramel. It's not like darker brown sugars or anything. It's definitely a caramel malt that's coming out of this one. Yeah, one thing I would say, there is just a little, as I say, there's a little bit of that peppery spice, but as you go into it, it does actually come out as if it's a bit more of the sort of clovey spice. It's, it is, it's a very interesting uh, malt base that's on this one. As I say, you're getting that nice, sweet, big, white, bready, belgian -y yeast, but that kind of little spicy element to it is quite interesting. There's a sort of mix between a peppery and a sort of... Um, clovey spice in it so it's a very interesting malt base just take a little bit of time when you're tasting this beer to focus on that and see what you think of it yourself as i say beer is always subjective so some of you guys might think the flavors are slightly different from what i'm describing but yeah it's a very malty beer this one around the edges of the tongue you're getting just a little bit of the hoppy character, that's where you're getting some of the lemony citrus feel coming out, maybe a little bit more orangey to be honest, but there is a definite kind of grassy presence there I think, but the, as I always say with Belgian beers, the grassy presence that you get in a Belgian beer is a lot different from what you get in an American beer or a, a German beer, it's, it's kind of, it's a lot, the citrus is a lot more um, prominent if you like, so the grassy character is more of a blend, but it's the citrus that's a little bit more forward in the kind of hoppy end of this beer. But yeah, overall, it's a very nice beer. In terms of the mouthfeel, definitely mid-bodied. It's The, the mid-bodied part comes from the really kind of big, bready and yeasty presence. I've never come across a, a Belgian beer that's light-bodied apart from the kind of things like Stella Artois, but that's not really a Belgian beer, I think. But um, definitely mid-bodied. It feels quite full just because of the, the yeasty presence, like I said. The carbonation in this guy is um, sort of middle, if you like. I found the Belgian blonde beers that I've tried before do have a slightly higher carbonation, and it sort of helps the, the, the flavour move from the, the big bready element to bringing out a little bit more of the hops in the aftertaste. In the aftertaste, you're really getting more of the citrusy and grassy element, maybe even slightly aromatic. That's what you're getting around the edge of the tongue, but you do have just this little bit of peppery spice sitting at the, in the back middle of the tongue there. Very, very nice beer, actually. There is just a little bit of bitter character, it is a little dry on the edge of the tongue which is what you expect from the hoppy characteristics. 
but it does have a lingering dryness about it as well I would say but I mean overall um, it's the first blonde beer I've reviewed for you on this channel but it's very very nice and if I went to Belgium you know I would happily drink a couple of these they're very it's a very good beer and it would be cool to actually see it a bit more often over here in Scotland so kind of glad I picked this one out and if this um, I need to check that but if this is my first uh, Belgian blonde review it, it's a shame because it's a style that I really like and this guy is a beer that I really have enjoyed tasting for you um, but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this beer review go and check out Browry de Musketeers this has been their blonde beer which was the very first one they brewed so cool to review this one for my first one hopefully I can get a few more of their beers and I'll review those for you at a later date let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer below always interesting to hear those and please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this review and there will be more Belgian ones for you to come. Cheers.